we'll go through that in a second. So, but I need you guys to repeat after me. I am. I am. I try this again. I am. I am the most awesome. The most awesome human being. Human being on this universe. On this universe. Okay, y'all got that first part. Turn up. All right. Y'all got that. I got you. Okay. Also. My thoughts, my and thoughts, and my actions, and my actions will dictate, will dictate the world's reaction. The world's reaction. Okay. I am a light. I am a light. Not only to myself. Not only to myself, but to others around me. But to others around me. And in order to be the change. And in order to be the change. In the world. In the world. That I want to see. That I want to see. The change starts with me. The change starts with me. Okay. Good. So, my life and a little snapshot. So, grew up in Miami, Florida. Growing up, I lost my mom to breast cancer. I was in about the sixth grade. And, you know, a lot of things in my life, in my career, in my goals, and the things that I'm doing today is all driven through my mom. Um, when I started to realize my true purpose in my life is really when she passed away. So for me, you know, losing my mom was really this opening to where I needed to go because I was in the sixth grade. I obviously, honestly didn't care about much in regards to school and life and my career, and I had no idea what I was truly needing to be doing. Um, got to high school, went to Miami, New Orleans Senior High. I loved it there, it was amazing, but once again, still not passionate about anything, still not passionate about school, still not passionate about life, not really sure what I wanted to do. Uh, eventually, something kind of triggered me to uh, go to the University of Florida, and I'll kind of get into that as well. But I do have something that I want to, you know, kind of share with you guys, open up with you guys, so you guys can understand why I'm really here. So my first message to you guys is embrace your fears. So anything that you guys are going through, you're always going to have to get to a point where you're going to have to embrace your deepest, darkest fear. You're going to have to take the leap. You're going to have to do things that nobody else is willing to do because only you guys are here to do. You only you guys were designed and here to really truly impact and change the world. So embracing your fears is really a big part of life. Me going to college when I had no idea or knowledge about what I was going to be doing, that was my first step in embracing my fears because me, I didn't want to be in Miami anymore. I had a greater purpose, I had a greater life, I had a greater calling, and I knew that somewhere deep inside of me, but I did not think that could happen. But me embracing my fears and going to college was my first beginning. So, second, be unapologetically you. So when I got to college, I thought it would be really cool to throw on an Nemo backpack and walk around campus. And so initially, when I wore this Nemo backpack, my first thought process was that I was gonna get a lot of girls, because they're gonna see it, be like, oh, that's cute, and then I'd be able to rope them in. And that was the goal, initially. But what started to happen was I started to make super awesome connections with people of all colors, all, all types of persuasions, all types of life, all parts of life. And so I really started to connect with faculty, with students that I would, would have never imagined having a conversation with, all because of me and me wearing this book bag. And that's when I first understood my brand. So if you guys don't understand your brand, is what you do, is what you eat, is what you wear, is what you say to your friends, is how you communicate to your friends, is what you're saying each and every single day on your social media, your Instagram, your Twitter, your Facebook, anything you put out, whether you know it or not, it's a part of your brand. It starts to build your identity, your career, who you think you will become or who you will become. So that's what kind of happened to me. I started to embrace me. And honestly, you know, if anybody doesn't like who you are and what you do, then don't kick rocks. Doesn't matter because you were here for a greater purpose. You were here for a greater mission and calling, but only you can recognize that. So be weird. I love Japanese anime. Many people don't. Doesn't matter to me how they feel, but I'm not gonna hate on them. I'm not gonna stop them. But look, let me be me. Let me embrace my weirdness. I can be goofy. I can be silly and that's fine. Let me enjoy that and let me bask in, in what I am truly. Also, if you're gonna live a life of purpose, it's all about helping others who can't do anything for you. So the people and the things that I work for and the things that I do in my life, I don't do it with the sense or, or purpose to gain anything back. Like I don't wanna give you something to feel like you owe me down the line. I'm sure you guys have been in that situation like, hey bruh, I thought I hooked you up way back. You know what I'm saying? So that's not me, that's not what I'm trying to do. So if I give you something, if I do something for you, if I want to encourage, uplift, and share something with you to inspire you to keep going, I don't want anything in return. Not my life, not really what I'm trying to do. So helping others who can't do anything for you, who can't give you anything, can't pay you back, can't do absolutely anything for you. That's where I found my most fulfilling aspects of life. And one of my big things in life is to break all the rules. 
So any rules, any limitations, any doubts, any things that, that have happened to you in your life, break those rules. If people have tried to put you in a box, step outside of it. If people have tried to stop you from truly, really manifesting in your greatness, then time to, time to cut loose from that. Breaking all the rules, learn the rules, learn how to play the game and then change it up. Everybody you see that you look up to from your athletes to your celebrities to people who are doctors, lawyers, somebody had to change the rules for you to get into the door. So now it's only right for you to change the rules and to go further. So as we talk about my life and my career and what does all of this, this weird stuff mean that I'm saying out of my mouth, this is what led me to create Foolies. So Foolies are people who are so passionate, so driven, so motivated to change the world that they're called fools for trying to do so. And that was me. So me and my brother of another color decided that we wanted to create a clothing company because we felt like we needed to further drive and further push our mission and passion to encourage and change the world. And at the time, I was doing a little bit of emceeing and rapping, and I was like, look, we got to do something deeper than this. We got to have a deeper bond in this. We got to change the world in a whole new way. And so we said we needed to create this clothing company. But Lo and behold, when I thought I was going to create this clothing company and be this rap superstar and become a millionaire, it's not really that easy. So I had to learn about sacrifice and about heart and about passion and why am I doing this. When you open up your refrigerator and there's only milk and cheese inside of it, life starts getting real. But if you're willing to take those jumps, if you're willing to take those leaps and really truly do what you need to do, then the world will open up for you in an amazing way. There's a quote that says, uh, every day when you wake up, the universe is conspiring something great for you. And I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe that everything that I'm doing, there's somebody out there in the universe that says, you know what, Alex, you were designed to do something way more powerful. You were designed to change the world and you wouldn't even know it. When I was sitting here in high school, maybe not in this specific high school, when I was sitting in high school, I would never be able to tell you that I would be in front of school students telling them what to do or like how to live out their goals and dreams. I would never have imagined that. But my purpose has always been greater. My calling has always been greater. And for those who, you know, understand, like, my passions all came from my mom and what she did for me, because I'm from, well, she's from Jamaica. She came here and had me, and we, you know, were able to make a lifestyle out of what we had, and she provided for me on like, every aspect that she could. She did all that she could for me while she was on this earth before leaving it. And she loved me to death, and she loved people. And so I have a bit of her inside of me where I love people and I do everything out of passion and heart. And she went from being a nurse to a cosmetologist and pursuing a, a career as a hairdresser. And that was her passion and that was her calling. And before she passed away, she wanted to open up her own salon and she never got to do that. So I feel like every day that I'm on this earth, I have to push for something greater because my mom literally died while trying to live out her goals and dreams. So how could I not? want to be great? How could I not want to do more? So that's a little bit of a snapshot into why am I doing this? Why am I here? Why do I feel this is important? Because personally, I never had anyone come and talk to me about a career, about a life outside of like high school, about going out of my city, doing something great, changing the world. I never saw that coming. I never saw that happening. No one actually put that into me. But finally, something said I needed to leave my environment. I needed to change my circle of friends and people who I'm hanging around with. And that circle of friends is so important because your circle of friends will start to control your wealth. And when I say that, I mean that your five friends that you keep around you, the five friends that you associate with, they start to build your circle of wealth. So if you understand <clears throat> how things work, if you hang around broke people, you're going to be broke. <laughs> Period. If you hang around broke people, you're going to be broke. And when I say that, it's not just from a sense of, of your finances. It's a sense of uh, spirituality and knowledge and health and well-being. So if you hang around broke people spiritually or if you hang around broke people who have nothing to say that is going to uplift you and motivate you to be great, then naturally you're not going to get to where you truly need to be. And for me, I try to make sure that I am the least coolest or awesome person in my circle of friends because my circle of friends, I want to learn from them, I want to grow from them, I want to have them add to me. And as I build, I want to be able to add to them and what they have going on in their lives as well. So I try to keep this circle of friends that's going to push me, that's going to you know, be able to motivate me, that's going to hold me accountable for the things that I am doing. If you don't have a friend that can tell you, hey, time to get up, stop playing, let's get back to it, let's continue to do what we need to do to be great, then you don't need those friends around you. And if you're not providing that value for them either, then you need to question why you're around them. 
because we're always quick to point fingers at who isn't doing anything right, but we're not doing anything ourselves.